Welcome to the video on section 1, which is the mid-segment theorem and coordinate proofs. So don't get too scared about the proofs part. It's not actually two, pair, two column proofs like we were doing it in something else. So our main ob objective today is to find the length of a mid-segment. So we should probably start out with the definition of what exactly is a mid-segment. So definition, a mid-segment connects two midpoints. of sides of a triangle. So for an example, find two midpoints. A mid-segment will connect those two midpoints. Okay, so every triangle has three mid-segments. So I drew in one. Now remember there is a third midpoint here. So this will give us one more mid-segment here and one more mid-segment here. Mid-segment has two main properties. First of all, it's parallel to the base. So if we give all of these points letters or names, this tells me that mid-segment BF, I don't know why I wrote it like that, sorry. So mid-segment BF is parallel to the base CE. Second important property is that it's half the length of the base. So in this case, BF, the length of BF, will be half of the length of CE. So that's mainly what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's look at example one. So it says, consider triangle DEF with midpoints A, B, and C. Find the following. Okay, so first thing, I want to mark that these are midpoints. So A is a midpoint, B is a midpoint, and C is a midpoint. Now we are told that, so we know that AB, BC, and AC are all mid-segments. So the two above properties hold. They're going to be parallel to the, their bases and half the length of their bases. So for the first bullet point, if AB equals 10, then DF equals, well, I know AB is one half of DF, so 10 is one half of DF. That will tell me that DF is going to be 20, since half of 20 is 10. Now, if I know that EF is 33, how am I going to find AC? Well, again, I know AC is going to be half of the base, half of EF. So AC then will be half of 33. So AC is going to be 33 over 2, which is the same as 16.5. Okay, third one. If BC equals 7, then BF equals... Okay, so right now we can't answer that the way that it's written. Change this BF to an AE. So if BC equals 7, what's AE? Well, if BC is 7, I know that DE is going to be 14. DE will be twice as long. Now DE is bisected into AD and AE, so AE then will be half of 14, which is 7. So BC and AE are congruent. I would like you to pause the video and try these two on your own, please. Come back when you are finished. See how we did. You should have gotten 13 and 20. 13 for the similar reason as the bullet point before. And then for the last one, if the perimeter of DEF is 40, the perimeter of ABC is 20. All of the sides of the smaller triangle are going to be half. So if all the sides are half, then the perimeter is going to be half. So I just took half of 40. So part of your classwork tomorrow is going to involve problems like this. So problems with just plain old numbers. There's also going to be some problems that throw in some algebra. Problem number two. So it says consider triangle DEF above with midpoints A, B, and C. In the figure, AC is 3x plus 4 and EF is 8x minus 20. Find the length of AC. 
Okay, so I'm going to redraw this triangle from above, so it probably would be a good idea if you did the same thing. Okay, so here's what I'm told. I'm told that AC is 3x plus 4, and that EF is 8x minus 20. Okay, so most students, when they do this problem, immediately want to say that 3x plus 4 equals 8x minus 20. Well, does AC even look like it's the same length as EF? No, so don't set them equal. You need to think about this. And I've told you the mid-segment AC is half of the base. It's half of EF. So this is your setup. 3x plus 4 is 1 half of 8x minus 20. Now, a lot of us don't like dealing with that 1 half, so right away I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. The 1 half and the 2 cancel, so I'm left with 8x minus 20. And then the left side has to be multiplied by 2, so that's going to be 6x plus 8. Now, if I subtract 6x, I get 2x on one side. If I add 20, I get 28. This tells me that x equals 14. Now, the problem, though, specifically asks for AC. So AC is going to be 3 times 14, add 4. So this will be 42, add 4. So AC ends up being 46. Okay, so problems like this are definitely more difficult. You need to think, what do I know about mid-segments? And then set up the problem thinking it through. Don't just set random parts equal. So we're going to try another example. If you flip the page, please. Okay, so this next example, number three, is a similar example. This is one that I would like you to try on your own. One thing that you need to fix is this DE should be DF. So change that DE to DF. Pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Let's see how we did. This is the same figure we've been looking at. We know that AB is 3x minus 3 and DF is 5x. Now, I know that my mid-segment, 3x minus 3, is going to be 1 half of the base, 1 half of 5x. Solving this, you should have ended up with x equals 6, and then dc is 15. If you didn't end up with that, you did something wrong, and you need to go back and fix your mistake. Please, right now, go back and fix your mistake if you need to. If you got the problem right, continue. So that's the mid-segment. Last part of this section is coordinate proofs. So for example number four, it says place a rectangle in the coordinate plane and assign coordinates to each vertex. All that means is I place a rectangle anywhere that I want. So I normally like to start my figures at the origin. So I'm going to draw this rectangle right here. Okay, that's a rectangle. Now all I have to do is put coordinates at each vertex. So the origin is 0, 0. This point is 4, 1. This is 4, 5. And this is 0, 5. So there we go. That's our coordinate proof. That's it. Example 5. Place a scalene triangle in the coordinate plane. Assign coordinates to each vertex. Okay, again, I like to start my figure at the origin. I'm going to draw a triangle that is clearly scalene. So maybe it's going to have one really long side one short side, and one medium side. Now you can tell that this triangle clearly is scalene. Assigning coordinates to the vertex, this is 0, 0, this is 10, 0, and then this one is 8, 3. Remember that a scalene triangle has no congruent sides. Okay, so that's it. Those are the coordinate proofs that we're doing. Second semester, we're going to do more coordinate proofs like this that are diff more difficult. But for right now, all you're doing is placing figures. Now remember that these are not the only answers you could have had for 4 and 5. This is not the only rectangle, and this is not the only scalene triangle. So when we, when we do these in class, a lot of times you're going to come up with answers that are different than mine. Okay, here are the last two problems that we have. So today's video focused mainly on mid-segments. At the end, we did some coordinate proofs. So right now, you have two mid-segment problems to do. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking these two problems, as well as all of your notes. 
Now think carefully for these last two problems. They look easy, but they're not as easy as they look. Make sure you think through them, please. See you tomorrow.